What's up, MMA fans? I'm currently being joined by the future of the strawweight division, Kay Hansen. Kay, you just had your second UFC fight. How are you feeling physically after the fight? Uh, I feel really good, you know. After every fight, you have a couple bumps and bruises, um, which, like, just comes with it. But I feel good. I feel healthy. That same night, I texted the matchmaker and was like, put me in, I'm ready. So, um, you know, I gave myself a couple days. Like, I'm already back in the gym training, but, like, I'm training a little lighter for this week. And then hopefully by next week, my body will be 100% so I can go. But no injuries, so that's good. So was the feeling any different from your UFC debut against Jin Yu? Like when you were first getting into the octagon or were you kind of, you know, those butterflies were gone? You know, like every walkout's different and every fight is different and every fight week is different. For me, um, this one was different than all of them in like the best of ways because I've never been so like confident in like, myself and confident in my team behind me and you know that played a really big part for me so like this was for sure the I felt the best like walking into this fight that I ever have I feel like I'm finally with the right team you know with the right people um so it was this was the best like experience I've had like camp wise and uh fight week wise and, and stepping in the cage and what was the very first MMA gym that you ever went to uh, I went to CSW. That's where I started at a Fullerton. And then when did you make the transition to 10th Planet? Uh, so I went, to, I transitioned to 10th Planet Fullerton like about a year and a half after I started training. Um, I was a purple belt. And then recently, like in the past three months, I think, I think in August, I joined Classic Fight Team. And that's, that's where I'm doing most of my training right now. Um, I feel like I'm kind of making that transition to just, you know, going there and then using like some people that I know from, you know, jujitsu programs and like kind of like doing my own thing that way until I kind of figure it out. But um, for classic has for sure been like the perfect fit for me. Yeah. And I saw some of um, Tyler's posts about you, you know, he obviously thinks you did enough in the fight to get the win. Uh, tell me about your guys' relationship. Um, you know, uh, Tyler's awesome. And uh He's probably the first coach that I've had that kind of like, he took initiative with my fight camp, but like respectfully, and he didn't like overstep boundaries. I feel like a lot of, like a lot of head coaches, like they kind of want to like be your, like your life manager. You know, they're like, you gotta eat this way. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. But like Tyler trusts me, you know, he knows I work hard. Like I maintain my diet. Like I maintain my training. I can structure my own training, but he stepped in as like this, this head coach role you know, and then, like, other coaches and, and, like, training partners kind of followed, but, like, he set up all my, like, sparring sessions, and, like, he was there for every single sparring session. He did a bunch of privates with me, like, um, my jiu-jitsu coach uh, who cornered me, Joe Murphy, he did the same thing, like, I just kind of feel like everything, like, like, fell into place for this camp perfectly, and Tyler was at that head, but like I said, I feel like he's, like, the first person that, like, has known how to like take on that role head on, but also like maintain boundaries. And like, you know, he knows I know like what I need to do. So he has that respect for me and he like understands that I can be a professional, that he just needs to help me, you know? So it's been, it's been pretty cool. That's awesome. And um, a big story of the fight between you and McKenna was that you guys were both 21, the youngest yeah. in, in the UFC and I guess part of that is your uh, influence from Ronda Rousey. You know, it's kind of crazy. I remember, uh, I think I was 15. I, it was like a couple of days. It was like a day before my birthday, I think, my 16th birthday. Um, it was birthday. Like August, yeah, my birthday is August 14th. So it was like either August 12th or 13th that she fought Betch Cohea. And I remember I was just like, like, whoa, like, I don't know, something about it just kind of like, it like, captured me and like if I'm being honest like this has been the first time that like I feel like that passion that I had when I first started had like been like reignited you know so when I yeah so when I was 16 um I saw Ronda Fight Betch and I was just like I gotta give this a go and I I was in the gym at least like three three weeks later I had to like bug my parents to like because they wanted to make sure that's what I wanted to do you know so I, had, I kind of had to bug them but I was in the gym probably two three weeks later and I listened to your podcast interview with Unfiltered, and yeah. they talked about um, just your personal life and how you were in such a good mental state before the fight. 
Um, yeah. You know, where are you now? And, you know, do you think that your dad is watching the fights and is, does he like kind of keep up with you, see how you're doing after? Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, I'm in a great mental place right now, even though I lost, you know, obviously um, for me, I know every fight comes with like an adrenaline dump. You know, you're on this high and then you kind of like hit this like, oh, like back to normal, like, but, um, you know, and I, and I lost, so it's a little more bitter, but like, I feel great. Like I've never been happier. Um, you know, I feel super happy. I feel like it's the first time in my life. I'm kind of like living for myself, you know? So, um, it's a good feeling and like, you know, going out there and fighting for like, I feel like I kind of had more of a purpose this time, you know, not even just for myself, but like for my mom and sisters and like, you know, my, my team behind me, I feel like this is the first time I I went to a fight and had like a legit team behind me that like genuinely just wanted me to succeed and like for me that's that's huge you know it was such a huge motivation and like um I don't know if my dad's like watching anything or I haven't been in any contact with him um and like I don't plan on either but you know I'm just trying to like do me I feel like I kind of let him control a lot of my life so um I try to not even like you know, think about that or like, um, the only thing I'd be concerned about is if he like reached out to my like sisters or something. But as long as that doesn't happen, like I'm just doing me for me, for, you know, everyone around me for my support system. And I've never, I've been, never been in a better place. Like even after like I, I lost. <laughs> yeah, no, you honestly radiate so much positive energy and it's good <laughs> that you're like not letting anything get into that bubble. Like, even after a tough, loss which you know I think really should have went your way um how many yeah. siblings do you have I have three little sisters so one is 17 she's a senior in high school one is 12 she's in seventh grade and then one is 11 and she's in fifth grade Okay, so it makes it makes sense that you're 21 and you're so mature. I remember in one of your quotes, you said, most 21-year-olds aren't like me. So there's obviously this just like yeah. go-getter grind about you that has put you in the position you are in now. Yeah, I've kind of, I don't know. I was, I, I've been through a lot, I feel like, in, in my like short little lifetime. I came out with a little bit about it on like uh, a recent interview I did. And like, I have more to the story, but... I'm just going to kind of slowly like let things unfold as like I feel comfortable, you know, um, but I've been through a lot like, like inside the cage too. Like if we've like kept up my career, like I've lost in really bad fashion and I've won in great fashion. I've won and lost close fights, you know, I've kind of been all over the spectrum, like, and I've experienced it all. So I feel like inside the cage and then outside of the cage, just like, you know, life kind of just finds ways to like, their curveballs at you all the time but um you know I'm just I'm just happy to like to be able to like do what I love and like provide for myself um you know so I'm excited you're, for the you're living the the dream in the sense that you're only 21 you're in the UFC the biggest promotion that you could be in and also it's not it's your second UFC fight but it's your 11th yeah. professional fight like you've been doing yeah. this since you're 16 years old could you just also talk about how uh, Invicta brings so like the best of the best like the cream of the crop yeah I can't I can't really give Invicta enough credit for you know what they did for me and what they do for like not only women's MMA but just like MMA in general like Shannon Knapp she's awesome like she's such a spearhead like leader type of person and you know she's the best person I've met along my journey like in the fight world so far like um, she just genuinely wants to like build you know women up and like she wants to be this like new spirit like she did those tournaments which was like nuts like she's crazy and it's awesome it's just like awesome to see like this creative mind like want to broaden you know like women's MMA and MMA in general she just like she was so cool and like I have a good relationship with her and and Victa and the whole staff they just do such a good job of uh, like like molding and like like building up all these athletes you know they kind of just give them the platform and like Shannon's super cool like I just remember always being like hey like I'm ready to fight I'm ready to fight ready to fight you know and I get a fight and like I'm eager to fight and she gets me a fight and you know and it and the good thing about the cool thing about Shannon was like she didn't like try to like she doesn't try to like give you hammy like like hand you easy fights you know she's like it's fair game for everyone she doesn't have favorites like she just like you get who you get, you know, and like, that was my favorite part about her. She just like, she believed in me. She believes in every single one of her athletes. And she just like self selfish, like selflessly, like gives herself to, to the women's MMA world. So I think 
I don't know. Invicta is like something really special for sure. It's so amazing what she's done because without her, I, I really don't know where women's MMA would be because she really it, that whole trip. It would be amazing. not where it is right now, that's for sure. And um, one of the Dana White Contender Series, Victoria Leonardo, she she gave yeah. a quick shout out to her. Too. So are you close yeah. with a lot of the Invicta fighters? Because I know you said you knew uh, Jin Yu to a certain extent. Yeah, so I'm not close to a lot of them. Like, we all know of each other, you know, because it is such a small world, especially, like, the women's MMA world. Um, but, like, Miranda Maverick, like, we're pretty, we're good friends. Um, and, like, I'm in contact with a lot of them, kind of interact on social media. Like, not too much, but, like, enough to kind of be, like, cordial. And, like, I think we all have this common, like, respect for each other, you know? So it's – Shannon, just she's created this just, like, the super cool um, – you know, group of girls who just like, I don't know, we just know how to work hard and, and we earn our way to the top, you know, and it's, it's such a, it's, Invicta is such a cool uh, promotion and like, I, I can't wait to see like what Shannon has next, like under her belt, because I know she has something, because she always does. <laughs> For sure. And just talking about like a sparring partner, do you have anyone that you're close to that really pushes you to, to your limits? Yeah, so I have a couple, I had a couple of this fight, um, Erica Rodriguez, she's my main sparring partner, um, she's in my corner, um, and, like, she's my main sparring partner, like, striking partner, like, everything she does at all, and, uh, you know, she's awesome, and she, like, she keeps me honest, and she keeps me in check, and, but, like, she knows how to do it respectfully, and we have, like, this, uh, this good bond, and, um, you know, I had a lot of, a lot of good girls this camp, you know, it's hard to find, like, girls that, like, just want to kind of work you know like I feel like uh, a lot of times drama is involved and like you know but I, I had a good group of girls this camp and uh you know I I hope to like continue that and like grow that kind of like just put your head down and work kind of group of girls you know yeah I'm sure having uh mentalities that are similar to yours and getting to a certain goal is super important especially are are the sparring partners also trying to do uh professional fighting or yeah so uh Erica Rodriguez, she's fighting in a Muay Thai tournament in December. Hopefully COVID doesn't push it back again. But another one of my sparring partners, Elisa, she's also doing the tournament. Um, one of, I'm trying to get my other sparring partner, her name's Anya, to do it. Lisa Malden, I don't know if you know Lisa Malden. She helped me for this fight. She's a pro fighter. She's fighting for LFA uh, in a couple weeks. Um, so, yeah, we, we had a couple really good girls, um, you know, in this camp and, like, I'm hoping we just continue to to keep that group solid, like in and out of camp. So, yeah, I feel like California is definitely a hub to get like all the people together. Yeah, I got Ruka today, and I got to meet uh, yeah. Darren and Chido Vera. It was so dope. Yeah. That'd be do that. She'd probably be a great grappling partner. Yeah, you know, it's the only tricky part is it gets hard because like there are a lot of great sparring partners or like training partners here in Orange County, but like we're also in the same division. You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to like, like, yeah, I would love to train with Mackenzie, but like, I kind of want to fight her one day. You know, I think it'd be a cool fight. Like Carla Sparza, like, yeah, like we could train together, but we could also fight. So it's kind of like this weird, like, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're like if you have Gilbert Burns and Kamara Uzma, is it going to be as good of a fight because they're training partners? So it's kind of yeah, good. Exactly, you know? So I don't know. It's kind of like you got to weigh your options and like if things happen a certain way, they happen a certain way. But like, I don't know. It's, it's tricky. <laughs> um, I also saw that um, I'll give you your uh, it's k's.art.gallery. Um, yeah. I also do. I have a basement at home and we would all just like paint in there. So if we were neighbors in Virginia, I would have invited you <laughs> over. But when did you guys start that? Um, I mean, uh, as a little girl, I always painted and I was like always super artistic and I love drawing and, and coloring and painting. But then uh, when I was like 10, I started playing softball and it got competitive fast. And then that's all I was doing was playing softball and then doing school and like trying to get good grades. So I kind of forgot about it. And then I started fighting and then it got even worse because now I'm really engulfed and I have five different martial arts to do. And like, um, but when quarantine hit and I was kind of like stuck and I didn't really know what to do, like, um, I just bought some canvases and I started painting and then I was like, oh, like, I forgot how much I like doing this stuff. So it's, that, it's so relieving, I'm sure. Yeah, it is, especially after getting like trying to choke people or getting choked or getting punched like all day, you know, you come home and you like paint and it's like so peaceful and like you're not getting punched. So it's nice. <laughs>